public. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. Mr. Speaker. I call the Honourable Member Paul Goldsmith. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And it was uh, um, very educational, as always, to listen to uh, our <coughs> colleague, Mr. Cunliffe, who was uh, always very um, uh, full and detailed in his contributions in the Select Committee, and we hear that in, in the House as well, uh, very detailed and thorough. And indeed, uh, so uh, we we're looking forward to his uh, continued cooperation and guidance uh, in the weeks and months to come. Now, this bill here, the Taxation, Livestock, Valuation and Assets Expenditure and Remedial Matters Bill, is a, uh, just a piece of tax maintenance. Uh, and everybody knows that uh, tax is not something that people necessarily want to pay more than they need to, and so the ingenuity of uh, individuals and businesses knows no bounds. Uh, and uh, with every new piece of tax law, there is a new attempt uh, to uh, find some way around it. And so there is a never-ending exercise of keeping up to speed with what's going on. And this bill really follows on in that pattern. And uh, the, the main items that I want to focus on are the livestock valuation changes, which uh, will be of great uh, interest and significance to those people living out in the areas uh, beyond the Bombay Hills. The proposals in particular expand on uh, legislation in Budget 2012 uh, that provided that, election, uh, that elections to use the herd scheme to value specified livestock are irrevocable unless an election to exit was made before the 18th of August 2011. And there are generally two ways that farmers can value their livestock, mainly beef and dairy cattle and sheep, but also deer, goats and pigs. Uh, at balance date for tax purposes. I'm not sure about rabbits, but uh, certainly pigs and goats. And the herds, uh, herd scheme treats uh, livestock more as if uh, they were a capital asset uh, using national average market values, uh, with changes in values from year on year being a tax-free capital account. Now, uh, farmers could elect out of the herd scheme with short advance notice period. Uh, now, there can be reasons, uh, there can be legitimate reasons for electing out of the herd scheme, uh, particularly the case if there's a change in the farming regime from breeding to fattening, uh, for which the cost-based regime is more apt. And this bill explicitly recognises by allowing that an election to exit the herd scheme for a type of livestock when there has been a change in the fattening regime. But the proposed rules will require persons who acquire livestock from associated persons to use that associated person's herd scheme election and base herd numbers, if any. And this associated person's rule will apply to matrimonial property settlements and to the tax consequences of death. Uh, now, I think that's important just uh, to make sure that uh, if, if that was left unchecked, I think there would have been uh, certainly a continuation of uh, some avoidance of tax uh, in that way. I just also want to speak briefly about ASEX expenditure. Uh, when we dealt with uh, holiday homes, aircrafts and boats in particular, and this was a source of considerable discussion during the Select Committee phase, and I think it's fair enough that everybody should pay their fair tax uh, and schemes whereby the private use of some assets were, is very significant and the actual income earning use is insignificant, uh, then we should be uh, more, more, uh, more detailed and thorough in our way of taxing that. And when we talk about fairness in general, we should just remember, uh, nevertheless, that you know, three quarters of income earners in New Zealand face uh, a tax rate of less than 17.5 per cent. And uh, we, we hear quite often on the other side of the House about uh, the, the, the tax cuts for the rich and so forth. But again, we should be remi rem reminded ourselves that uh, every family in this country with two children uh, earning around 45 to 50,000 effectively pays no income tax in New Zealand. And, and so, uh, well, the, the, we don't need to worry about the origins of it, but that is the fact. And so there is an enormous enormous amount of redistribution going on in this tax system uh, and continuing to maintain it in such a way that it still yields the dividends that's required is uh, very much what this bill is about. And on that basis, Mr Speaker, I commend it to the House. Thank you. That was quite good. I call the Honourable David Parker. Uh,